Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5, Integration by Parts. Now we use this method of integration when we have the integral of a product of two expressions. So it's kind of like the opposite of the product rule. We'd use a product rule in differentiation if we had the product of two things, whereas we use integration by parts if we were doing the integration of the product of two expressions. And the formula for integration by parts is this, and this is the one thing we're going to use. If we're integrating some expression u times dv over dx with respect to x, then it's equal to uv minus the integral of v du over dx dx. And this is going to look very confusing at first, but once we actually apply this formula, it's not quite so bad. So let's look at this particular example here. We're trying to integrate u e to the x dx. Now, if we look at this thing here, we choose one of these two things to be the u and one of these two things to be the dv over dx. Now, in general, whenever you have an x or an x squared term, you choose that to be the u and the other thing to be the dv over dx. There's some exceptions to this, which we'll explore later. And, and part of the motivation is that we want to choose the thing that's u that becomes simpler when we differentiate it. So if we made x the thing that we're going to differentiate to become du over dx, then x is going to differentiate to 1, which is simpler. So let's do that. We've got u is equal to the x, and we've got this dv over dx is equal to the e to the x. Now, can you see in this expression here, we need d over dx. So I'm going to write d over dx. When we differentiate x, we get just 1. And we're also going to need v as well, as you can see. So we need to integrate dv over dx to get v. And e to the x just integrates to e to the x. And now, basically, this thing here, we can just work out by shoving everything into this formula. So we get u times v, u times the v, which is x e to the x minus the integral of v, which is e to the x, times du over dx, which is just 1 with respect to x. And then it's easy to finish this. The integral of e to the x is just e to the x. And let's not forget the plus c. Now, the way I remember this formula is that we have ultraviolet light, uv is short for ultraviolet light, minus the integral of, and notice the v and the d over dx are the things on this second row. So the two new things that we wrote, we're going to integrate the product of those two things. So let's apply this again to this second example. We've got the integral of 2x sine x dx. Again, we need to decide what to make the u and what to make the dv over dx. So as before, if you've got an x term or an x squared term, a polynomial term, you make that the u. So u is going to be this 2x here. And then the dv over dx is going to be sine x. Now, as before, we need to differentiate this u to get 2. And we integrate the other thing, in this case, to get minus cos x. And let's just do integration by parts again. It's going to be UV light, ultraviolet light, so the 2x times the minus cos x, so minus 2x cos x, minus the integral of the two new things that we wrote, so the 2 and the minus cos x. So that's minus 2 cos x. And a nice little trick, if you've got the minus here and the minus here, you can sort of factor out that minus out of here, and they just become plus. And that just means you've got less negatives to worry about, because otherwise we're going to end up with like a triple negative. So now we have minus 2x cos x, and we've got to integrate 2 cos x, which is just 2 sine x. And let's not forget the plus c, and we are done. Now, in question three, we've now got limits in this integral. So how do we deal with these? Well, let's first just ignore the limits and work out this integral without the limits, and then we'll worry about the limits at the end. So, as before, u is going to be the x, dv over dx is going to be the sine 2x. So let's do this very quickly. du over dx is 1, we differentiate that and integrate this. Well, it becomes minus cos, but we have to divide by that 2 in front of the x, that's the reverse chain rule. So minus half cos 2x, and let's do integration by parts. So we just get ultraviolet light, so minus half x cos 2x, and we do the product of the two things, minus the integral of the product of the two new things. So we've got minus half cos 2x, 
Again, those two minuses we could just make a plus because they cancel, and that gives us minus half x cos 2x, and then that's going to be plus a quarter because we're dividing by that 2 again, sine 2x. And this time we're not going to have the plus c because at this point we can just put in our limits. So we've integrated this expression here, and if we put the limits back of pi over 2 and 0, we can put square brackets around this with the pi over 2 and the 0, and we have two normal brackets at this point. So let's sub in the pi over 2, minus half pi over 2 cos of 2x, so cos of pi, plus a quarter sine and sine pi, and then we're going to sub in the 0 into these. So that's just going to be 0, and then we've also got a quarter sine 0, which is just 0. So we can completely ignore this bracket here. Now cos of pi is minus 1, so this becomes positive pi over 4, and sine of pi is just 0, so we're just left with pi over 4. Now this is an interesting one. We want to integrate ln of x. Now this doesn't even look like a product of two expressions, does it? It's just one thing, ln of x. But the trick here is that we put a 1 on front of it. And in general, whenever you have a ln x as one of the things in integration by parts, you should always make that the u. So if, for example, you had the integral of x ln x, I know I said before that you usually make the x a u, but because you've got this ln x here, you should make that the u. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the ln x the u. And then I'm going to make the 1 the dv over dx. So if I differentiate that, du over dx is equal to 1 over x. And the v is equal to x, because 1 integrates to x. And let's now apply integration by parts. We get uv, ultraviolet light, x ln x, minus the integral of the two new things times together. 1 over x times x is x over x. That's just 1. So we're integrating 1 with respect to x. And that just becomes x ln x minus x, plus c, obviously. And that's actually a worthwhile result to memorise. And when you integrate ln of x, you get x ln x minus x, plus c. Now, question five, I've got something similar. We want to find this area under the graph, which is integrating between 1 and 4. And we've got x to the half ln of 2x dx. Now, as before, I said, if you have a ln as one of the things in your product, you should make that the u. So u here is ln of 2x, and the dv over dx is going to be the x to the half. So we differentiate this. And you should remember that when you differentiate ln of a constant x, you just get 1 over x. We ignore that constant unless that constant's on the front. And then we integrate this, we add 1 to the power, it becomes x to 3 over 2, and then we divide by that 3 over 2, that's the same as times by 2 thirds, and then let's just apply integration by parts, we get uv, which is 2 thirds, x to the 3 over 2, ln 2x, minus the integral of these two new things times together. Well, when you times by 1 over x, that reduces the power of x by 1. So that's going to become 2 thirds x to the half dx. And let's just integrate this thing over here. 2 thirds x to the 3 over 2, ln 2x, minus, and then we're going to add 1 to that power. This becomes x to the 3 over 2, and then divide by that power. When we divide by 3 over 2, we times by 2 thirds. So that's going to become 4 ninths. And then because this is definite integration, we don't have the plus c, and I'm going to put this in square brackets with our limits of 4 and 1. And then I'm just going to finish off this question over here. I have two normal brackets, and then I'm going to put the 4 into this. So we have 2 thirds, 4 to the 3 over 2, ln, 2 times 4 is 8, and then we've got minus 4 ninths, 4 to the 3 over 2, and then minus, so and now we're going to put the 1 into this, so we're going to get 2 thirds times 1 times ln of 2, minus 4 ninths times 1, and this is going to be a bit of a palaver to simplify, but 4 to the 3 over 2 is 8, 8 times 2 thirds is 16 thirds ln 8, and then 4 to the 3 over 2 we said was 8, so it's minus 8 times 4 over 9 is 32 over 9. 
and then we've got this minus two thirds ln two, and then we're going to have minus minus four ninths, which is plus four ninths. And then what we can do is because the eight here is two cubed, so if I just write that as two cubed, I can move the three to the front, so that then becomes 16 ln 2. And then the minus 32 over 9 plus the 4 over 9 is minus 28 over 9. And we've still got a minus is 2 thirds ln 2. And that becomes 16 minus 2 thirds, which is 46 thirds ln 2. And we've got that minus 28 over 9. Sorry, it's so squidged there. Now we just have a couple more here. We want to determine the integral of x squared e to the 2x dx. Now, as before, I said we should make the polynomial term the u, unless you have a lun somewhere, which we don't. So we make u equal to x squared and the dv over dx equal to e to the 2x. As before, we differentiate the u, which is 2x, and integrate the e to the 2x, which is half e to the 2x, because we divide by the number in front of the x, the coefficient of x, the reverse chain rule. And then let's apply integration by parts. We get uv, which is half x squared e to the 2x, minus the integral of the two new things times together. 2 times half is just 1, so it's x e to the 2x. Now, can you see that we're going to have to integrate by parts again because we have a product of two things? So I'm going to now separately work this out and substitute it in later, just so we can keep track of what we're doing. So u is equal to x dv over dx is e to the 2x. We differentiate the u to become 1, and we integrate the e to the 2x to become half e to the 2x. And then this is equal to uv half e to the x e to the 2x minus the integral of these two things times together. And that is just half x e to the 2x minus a quarter, because we're dividing by 2, e to the 2x. I'm not going to put the plus c because we'll put that in the end. And that means this final result, the integral of x squared e to the 2x is, well, we said it was half x squared e to the 2x minus this integral, which we worked out was this, so I'll put it in brackets. And then if we just get rid of those brackets, we get, sorry, that should have been a squared. And then if we just get rid of this bracket, we have half x squared e to the 2x minus half x e to the 2x and minus minus a so plus a quarter e to the 2x plus c. Then this very last question here, and this is not in the textbook, and technically it's not in the syllabus, but did once come up in a very old uh, exam paper, so I'm just being cautious here. We want to integrate e to the x sine x. Now, it's not clear what we should make the u here, because um, if we keep on differentiating this, it's going to go sine cos minus sine etc. in a loop, and this is also going to just stay as e to the x. So neither becomes simpler, but I'm just going to arbitrarily make the u, the e to the x, and the dv over dx equal to sine x, and let's just see what happens. So the du over dx is equal to e to the x, and v is equal to minus cos of x. So when I do integration by parts, I get uv, which is minus e to the x cos x, minus the integral of these two new things times together, which is minus e to the x cos x. And as per my trick before, these are both minus, so let's just turn that into plus. So now we've got to do integration by parts to work out this. So if I work that out separately, as a sort of sub-result, I'm going to again make u equal to the e to the x. The dv over dx is equal to the cos x. So that means du over dx is e to the x. v is equal to sine x. And that means that this is uv, which is e to the x sine x minus the integral of the two new things times together. Ah, but we seem to have gone in an infinite loop because we're back where we started. But that's okay because look what happens when I just write out this original result again. We've got the integral of e to the x sine x. Now this is equal to minus e to the x cos x and then plus this result here. So plus e to the x sine x and then minus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. 
So we've got this integral of e to the x sine x on both sides of the equation. And here's the sort of magic trick here. If we were to just add the integral of e to the x sine x to both sides, we'll now have two lots of the integral of e to the x sine x. And we know that is equal to this thing here. And then if we just want the integral of e to the x sine x, which is what we were originally trying to work out, then we just half both sides. So we've now got the integral of e to the x sine x is equal to, and if I just factorise that e to the x out to save space, I have minus cos x plus sine x, so sine x minus cos of x with the plus c, and that is the final result.